Welcome to ECLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today our topic will be electrochemistry. We are going to be looking at now the standard electrode potential and this is the introduction bit. So standard electron potential or written as uh, here with the O at the at the front this is a potential different of a cell comprising of a particular element in contact with one molar solution of its ion and the standard hydrogen electrode so the standard electrode potential is that different so if you take for example our copper copper ion cell half cell and compare it with our standard hydrogen electrode and the difference that we get in their potential potential values is what we refer to as the standard electrode potential so it is usually denoted with that symbol you're going to see that symbol a lot in the tables it helps us to compare the oxidizing and the reducing powers of various substances so let's look at the standard hydrogen electrode so when you look at the standard hydrogen electrode it's an hydrogen half cell which has been chosen as the reference electrode it has an electrode potential of zero so if you see you're given a table in the exam and you notice the standard electrode potential as zero you know that is the reference electrode and most cases is the hydrogen electrode so it has a, it is measured at temperatures of 25 degrees celsius at one atmospheres and concentration of one molar these are the standard conditions that is why it's called the standard electrode potential so standard hydrogen electrode as you can see from this from the setup it is Hydrogen is bubbled at one atmosphere in a solution of hydrochloric acid with a concentration of one molar and 25 degrees Celsius. And you can see we have the platinized as asbestos or the platinum. So the hydrogen ions, the hydrogen gas is bubbled into uh, the platinum electrode and then the hydrogen is absorbed into the platinum surface and an equilibrium is established between the absorbed layer of the molecular hydrogen and the hydrogen ions in solution. So the hydrogen is going into solution and forms hydrogen ions and loses electrons. So that is what happens on the platinized asbestos or the platinum. Platina, platinized platinum is a platinum loosely coated with finely divided platinum. It enables it to retain large quantities of hydrogen due to its parasites and also serves as a route which electrons leave or enter the electrode. So the hydrogen electrode is represented. As you can see, hydrogen ions get into solution to hydrogen gas get into solution and dissociates to form hydrogen ions and electrons are lost in the process. So you see how the half the, the cell notation of the electrode of the half cell is notated. So electrode potential of any metal is taken as the difference in the electrode potential between the metal electrode and the standard electrode. So when you get that difference, sometimes you can get negative or positive values. So negative electrode potential, if the metal electrode has a higher tendency to lose electron than the hydrogen electron, then the electron is negative with respect to hydrogen electron. So for example, if you look at metals, and you compare them with hydrogen, you'll notice the electrode potential are going to be negative. That tells you that these metals have a higher tendency to lose electrons. If they, they are, we get positive electrons after comparing these two electrodes with the hydrogen electrode, that tells you that this electrode has a higher tendency to gain electrons examples are copper so if you were to look at where the electrode uh, hydrogen electrode is in the electrochemical series it would be between copper and then uh, the others that are above it zinc magnesium and etc those ones would have negative electrode potential while silver and copper would be below hydrogen would have positive electrode potential that tells you zinc Copper and silver have a tendency of gaining in comparison to hydrogen, while magnesium and zinc have a tendency of losing in comparison to hydrogen. That's how the hydrogen electrode works. So let's look at this sample, for example. 
So you see we have the potassium, fluorine, and magnesium. If you look at the electrode potential, potassium and magnesium have negative electrode potentials, while fluorine has positive. This is in comparison to the hydrogen electrode. So this tells you that potassium and magnesium have higher tendencies of losing electrons, while fluorine has a higher tendency of gaining electron. So reduction potential is a standard electrode potential measured when the electrode in question is gaining. You hear from the word reduction process is gaining electrons. So the lower the tendency of an electrode to gain electrons, the lower the reduction potential and vice versa. So you notice potassium has negative electrode potential. So it has low tendency to gain electrons. Thus, potassium is a weak oxidizing agent, but it's a very strong reducing agent. This is a concept that sometimes uh, confuses students. So let's look at it again. So we have oxidation. We have oxidation and we have reduction. So oxidation is loss of electron, reduction is gain of electron. Substances that undergo oxidation are reducing agent. Substances that undergo reduction are oxidation, oxidizing agent. So we are saying substances that have negative values undergo oxidation. They lose electron. So it means they are strong reducing agent. While when you look at the reduction process of gaining electron, so the substances that have positive values have the highest tendency of gaining electrons. So it's, they are the strongest oxidizing agent. So it is important to see the difference. So negative values tendency to lose electrons, strongest reducing agent. Positive values, highest tendency of gaining, strongest oxidizing agent. So potassium and magnesium are strong reducing agent, while fluorine is a strong oxidizing agent. I hope you have been able to see that. So now this gives us the electro the electrochemical series it doesn't have the anions we are going to include anions later on when we come to electrolysis but you can see the electrode potentials of fluorine chlorine bromine silver iodine these ones are positive in relation to hydrogen which is our reference electrode and then the metals are negative that tells you the, ten, the uh, reducing agent, the tendency to lose electron, is increasing as you go down the, the series. And then the tendency to gain is increasing as you go up. It's opposite. Fluorine has the highest tendency to gain, while potassium has the highest energy to lose. So it goes in the opposite side. So you notice the negative values will always form the anodes or the ones that have higher uh, tendency to lose electrons will be the anode. And then the ones that have a higher tendency of gaining will be the cathode. So that's how the electrode uh, potentials are usually arranged in the electrochemical series. So the E values are usually used to determine the reactivity of metals and nonmetals. They're also used um, when you are determining the reducing and oxidizing powers of various substances. They're also used to calculate the EMF or electromotive forces of cell. They're also used to predict whether a reaction will occur or not occur. So when you look at this question, for example, we are going to arrange these metals in order of their reactivity. So we are going to look at their tendency of losing electrons. That is how metals behave. So you look at the one that has the highest tendency of losing and then the one that has the lowest tendency of losing.
and we are able to get that depending on their electrode potentials. So we said for the metals, the electrode potentials are negative. The bigger the negative value, the more it has a tendency of losing. So if you were to look at the most reactive in this case, it would be barium, followed by zinc, followed by uh, silver, and then chlorine you'd ask me why. So barium has a negative electrode, the largest, and then followed by zinc, which has the second largest ele negative electrode. When you compare between the positive one, chlorine is more positive than silver. So silver is more negative. So silver will come before chlorine. So the reactivity, barium is the most reactive, and then silver is the least reactive so in your answer we start with barium zinc and then silver since chlorine is a not a metal it's a non-metal so that is how it works so this is just a sample question that helps you to see how their reactivity is later on we are going to look at how now using this information different things we can be able to determine them so see you in the next lesson as we look at one of the uses of these standard electrode potentials.